Well, if you're not interested in actually getting your science to change the world, then, um, then you don't have to. That's absolutely fine. You know, if you just want to be sort of uh, an ivory tower academic with no engagement in the real world, then don't bother. But <laughs> if you actually are interested in changing things, then it's absolutely vital to engage with all those people that actually make decisions in the world. And policymakers are a large uh, influence within that community. Uh, but I'd also add uh, business people, NGOs, and also the general public because they're the arbiters of, uh, of preferences and values. You've got to think about the real world challenge that decision makers uh, really face. M the vast majority of decision makers that I've met uh, actually do want to make a good job. They want to improve society. The problem is they're faced with unlimited want unlimited ways to improve people's lives um, hospitals better transport systems better environment and limited resources so they've got this real problem that they've got to handle all these different um, uh, demands upon those uh, uh, limited uh, um, uh, financial and other resources if you simply go to them and say i know that this particular bat will react in this way um, and uh, you give them no way to actually judge how important that issue is compared to the other issues they have to deal with then you're really almost adding a problem rather than uh, trying to find a solution if you were a decision maker faced with all those different competing demands what would you do now, I think answering honestly, you'd want to know how important the bat issue is compared to lots of the other issues that decision makers face. So translating that information into um, a, a language that they can actually trade off against different competing um, calls on resources is absolutely vital. It's part of the scientific challenge, and if you duck that, you're basically putting yourself into a very small category um, where you're saying my interest uh, comes in in a totally different unit, a totally different way of, of looking at things to everybody else's interest. So, you know, doctors might be telling you to do this and uh, transport uh, engineers might be telling you to do something else. They're, they're all making their claims in uh, nice commensurate units, they're saying this will generate this value or that value, and I'm just saying no, you have to do this, this is absolutely imperative. You need to put yourself in their shoes and realise that they have a very difficult job to do, and you need to try and translate your findings into units and language that they can actually understand, otherwise they won't really be able to deal with your information. Number one, talk to them. <laughs> I know it sounds very, very obvious, but a lot of uh, scientists don't. Um, uh, these are uh, typically intelligent uh, non-specialists. Uh, they need to understand what you're talking about in language that uh, is not overly complex, uh, that actually relates to the real world decisions they uh, have to make. You also need to, th to present information in ways which can be comparable with the other issues that they have to deal with. So imagine so, you know, you're, you're providing some information on uh, some particular species to a decision maker who is also having to make decisions which will affect whether somebody's house gets flooded or not, or whether somebody keeps their job or not. So you need to actually try and put yourself into their uh, situation and generate tools which will help that comparability across that complexity of issues. I was very lucky um, early on, uh, well a few years ago, uh, to be part of the UK National League System uh, assessment. That um, was an attempt to try and look at 
it's the uh, state of health and uh, trends in UK ecosystems. Uh, and it did it in a way which was both scientifically credible but also accessible to decision makers. It resulted in really quite a major impact upon the uh, Natural Environment White Paper that came in uh, afterwards, um, resulting in a, a whole host of uh, practical uh, initiatives, but also the setting up of the Natural Capital Committee, which I was fortunate enough to uh, be part of, which has in turn led to a commitment by the government to set up a 25-year plan uh, for the natural environment, which is what we need. The natural environment has been degraded for the last couple of centuries. We need a long-term plan uh, if we are actually going to deliver on that white paper goal of not just uh, halting the decline in natural capital, but actually reversing it and leaving the environment in a better state uh, than uh, uh, the present generation um, has to um, deal with.